This is a data set on how to make subsets within your data set. So this may be that you want to separate out some of your analysis into different groups, or you want to make a new data set that only has some people in it, um, or some cases in it, or you want to temporarily filter some cases, or even remove them from your data set. So I'm going to show you a few tricks that are very handy for multiple purposes. One is that sometimes we're engaging in sustained comparison between two different groups. Right, so we want to compare, um, this is the Educa Education Longitudinal Survey of 2002, um, and this one is very focused on, um, this is very focused on Hispanic students who live in the city, um, this version of it. And say, for example, there's this variable about English is student's native language, um, and it's dichotomous, which is very useful. We can do this with non-dichotomous variables, but it's nice that this one is. And what we're really interested in doing is we want to run a, a bunch of different kinds of analysis, comparing um, the relationship between variables for students for whom English is the native language and for whom it isn't. So if we go up to data and then down here to split file, this is a temporary split. This, um, you can turn this on and off, right? In fact, you have to turn it off at the end. Um, and it's not saved from... Um, from, it doesn't save within your data set necessarily. So it makes no permanent change to your data set. But what it does is it will organize all of your output into two different groups, right? Or as many groups as there are um, in your project. So um, we're going to put the variable that we're interested in here. I'm going to say we want to sort the file by these grouping variables. So we just click OK. And what it will do is it will automatically, for all of the output you do from now on, it will divide it into um, how people answered this question, right? So say I just wanted to do um, a very simple uh, frequency analysis, right? So I want to look at some frequencies of some other variable. Um, so I want to look at um, this question of how far in school the student thinks they will get. And um, that's, just, that's just what I'm interested in. So I click, I might want to get some statistics on it, like get some quartiles and like a mean, a median, and a mode. Um, actually, I probably can't do the mean here. So the median and the mode. Um, so I'm going to do that. And what it will do is, first of all, it, it made it, uh, the category of missing, right? So it's like, oh, this first group is kind of missing. So I probably need to go back and clean my data up. And there's some folks who refused, right? But here, we say English is student's language, no, right? So these are students who were, who were raised initially speaking some other language, probably Spanish. Um, and it tells us how many students have, were, are included in this section. Right? It gives us the median for this group. It gives us the mode. It gives us some percentiles. And then it gives us a frequency distribution um, just for students who for whom English is not their native language, and of how they answered this question. So what percentage of them uh, think they will attend college, think they will graduate from college, think they will obtain a master's degree or equivalent? Um, how many of them think that like this is what they're going to they're gonna end up doing? Right? And then if we scroll down. Here are students for whom their English is their native language. Right? So there's 12,000 of them. So we can go through, we can do frequency distributions um, here. If you found multiple cross tabs overwhelming, this is a really easy way of um, using control variables, using consistent control variable, and getting smaller cross tabs. Um, so you don't end up with those huge tables. You get individual tables for each kind of subgroup. So this is kind of useful. It's particularly useful when we make graphs, right? So if we just want to make a pie chart, a very, very simple pie chart, And we want to just make a, the same pie chart, right? Um, so how far in school they think they're going to get. Um, I'm going to change it to percentage for here. Um, and what we can do when we click OK is it makes two pie charts for us. Actually, this is like, here are students for whom English is the student's native language. No, it wasn't. Like they were raised speaking some other language. So we can see kind of how they answered this question, right? And then for student, for when English is, is a student's native language. So this can be very useful if you're comparing two different groups, if you're comparing tourists and people who live in San Antonio, people who are, um, have moved into a housing complex more recently, 
um, or have been living there over time, right? It can be a way of visually comparing two different groups very, very easily. It may be that um, you're not that interested in uh, temporarily doing this, right? So I'm going to go back and I'm going to click reset to get rid of this split file. But it may be that we want to do something a little bit more permanent or a little more sustainable, right? So maybe we want to make a whole data set that is just students who, whose native language is not um, English. Um, so we might decide, okay, I want to make um, a whole data set because this is what my project was really about. It's really about students who um, answered no to this question. So I could go up to data and I could go up to select cases, right? And there's all sorts of different ways that I can um, do this. So I'm going to use the if button here and we're going to run into this more later. And I'm going to say, okay, I only want um, to make a data set of students who said um, that English is not their native language, right? So there's a couple of things. Um, that's my selection. And then for my output, I can decide to temporarily filter out unselected cases, right? So this will make a temporary filter so that I can just analyze within my data set. Maybe I want to run a whole bunch of analysis. And I'll keep that filter. You notice that it will make a filter variable. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I click OK, what it will do is that um, if I look in the data view, you can see that it actually crosses out anyone who's not being included in this analysis. So this is an easy way of figuring out if your filter is on, right? So you go through, um, you can see that only people who said that English is not their native language are included, which is a very small group of this huge data set. So any analysis I do, so if I go and get a frequency distribution, um, it will be just those students. It will be just those students. And because you can't really like tell that it's just those students, you have to be really aware of when you have a filter on. The second thing it will do is it will, in your variable view, it will make this new variable, which is, um, which is your filter variable, right? So it can, this can be a way of recoding things. So you'll see that one means they're selected. So this is a student who was raised um, bilingual and one means not selected. This is less impressive for something like this, which is already dichotomous. But if I had um, made a selection for, um, say, like a range of individuals who um, their, their parents went to high school or um, a more advanced degree, right? It would make a dichotomous variable out of that for me that I could use in the future. And I could use it again. I can go in and I can rename this um, bilingual instead. Um, and that kind of is a little extra bonus perk. So the thing about select cases is that you also have to go back in and you have to say, okay, I don't want to be filtering anymore. I'm going to reset this. We can decide to get more um, particular, right? So I'm really interested in, um, you know, so these students who think that they're going to go to college, right? They want to attend or complete, um, they want to graduate from college, right? This is what they aspire to do. Um, so they answered this question, greater than or equal to five. So I'm going to look. <clears throat> And I also may be interested in what their parents expect, right? Um, I may be interested in whether or not they, their parents think they're going to graduate from college. So say this is a group of students that I'm really interested in. I want to make a whole data set that's just about them. So I'm going to go to data select cases. I'm going to say, okay, well, if student, um, I'm going to use these little parentheses for this. If the student is greater than or equal to five, so they said either oh, I'm going to graduate from college or I might go on and get like a master's degree, right? Um, then I can decide I'm going to make a whole new data set of just kids who want to go to college, right? And so I might name it, um, it has to be just one word, so college bound, if I can spell. Um, college bound, and if I click OK, it will make this whole new data set. Um, this is just called college bound. I also might want to get more complicated, right? So maybe it's not just these kids I'm interested in. Maybe I'm interested in if 
they both believe that they are going to go to college and their parents believe that this as well. So this will include people only for whom the student and the parent are in agreement that they're going to go to college, right? So I'm like, this will create a whole new data set that just has individuals who um, the kid wants to go to school, wants to go to college, and the parents also think that they will graduate from college. Or it could get really interesting and say um, sort of either or, right? Not both conditions have to suffice. As long as one or the other works, then they can be in the data set, right? There's some advantages to that. I also can get um, a little bit more complicated in how I'm thinking about this. And if I'm really interested in um, kids who have aspirations above and beyond what their parents believe, right? I might say, well, I'm what I'm really interested in is um, it, the kid really wants to go to college and the parents think the child will not go, right? So that may be a whole new group that I'm interested in analyzing. And so I can analyze them um, instead, right? So if I continued with this, it would create um, this whole new data set, or I could use that as a filter. So you can get pretty creative. Um, here with this if button. You also can make a lot of problems with this if button. Um, you can't string too many things out. So if I said um, students expect this and I want parents to not expect them to go to school or I want um, you know the student to be his the student to be Hispanic, I um, this, this is getting too complicated, right? Um, especially when you start mixing ands or ors, SBSS isn't really sure what you're trying to do. I can do a series of ands, a series of conditions that I want to be met, right? I want it to be Hispanic female students who expect to go to college, but their parents don't expect them to. This could be a really interesting analysis, right? But if I do, and I could do a series of ors, right? Either they want us to go to school, or their parent wants them to go to school, or their friend expects them to go to school, right? Um, these are all things I could do. But when you start mixing your ands and your ors, um, it gets a little bit too messy.